David Pride, uh, I've been trying to get you on here for the longest time. Mm-hmm. You've been avoiding me, like the plague, sir. I have not been. <laughs> this has been busy. Uh, no, I don't know what I've been. I just, uh, yeah, I always feel busy, but even when I'm not, it's like you're either busy or you stop being busy and then you just plop down and go in a coma for a couple weeks. What do you have to know? Uh, I've been writing for the last month mostly, like the little contract work for stuff. Uh, a bit of Just for Laugh stuff, a bit of debater stuff. And is, the debater is pretty big from what Derek Sagan was telling me last time. A lot of people uh, tune into the debaters. They like it. Mm-hmm. It's. Uh, I didn't know how much writing was. I thought it was the comedians they get on that generally have to work out their own stuff. But yeah. they also have a team of, I guess, writers since... For Steve Patterson, the host. like Just, uh, just you know, little okay. continuity bridges between the segments and stuff. Interesting, interesting. Mm-hmm. I never been on the debaters. Uh, Canadian uh, comedy stuff normally doesn't invite me to anything. Mm-hmm. I need I need the states to like me. The the Canadians aren't the biggest fans. I don't know why. Uh, that's interesting. What about uh, what about stand up? Uh, just mostly local stuff around town. Uh, a lot of stuff at the Nest. A lot of uh, yeah, a little. Uh, uh, well, we we did like a satellite benefit. You and I did that yeah. uh, a couple of weeks ago, and. Uh, um, yeah, just little little things here and there. I'm doing Matt Shuri's show Partment this Friday. There we go. Um, should I plug that? That's of course, 3035 St. Antoine, a, a beautiful scenic stroll from Lionel Groom Metro. <laughs> uh, you go to 3035, and then you follow signs in this scary apartment building, and it's uh, utterly uh, perplexing and intimidating. But then, <laughs> then at the end, you get rewarded with a show. A lot of people are doing the apartment shows now. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a couple in the city. I think two or three. I like that. I like the fact that people are trying. They're, they're building their own rooms. trying Because mm-hmm. they bring a lot of people into the comedy scene, people that are getting to see stand-up, yeah, that yeah. otherwise wouldn't see it live. They will, they'll watch it on Netflix, mm-hmm. but they don't really go out to the clubs. Some people are intimidated by it. They, there's still this fear. Uh, I notice at the Nest a lot, if people get scared, they still think that you're going to make fun of them as a comedian. Yeah. Uh, it's the 80s, and you're like Rodney Dangerfield in a movie. Yeah, yeah. And they're like, who's this asshole? But it is so, you know this from dealing with, how rare is it to see a comedian that just goes on and for no reason starts shitting on people? <laughs> What's the percentage like? It's very, it's, uh, it's more, it seems more of a rookie mistake these days, yeah. right? It's just the younger people that are like trying to like sort of... Uh, Intimidate who, them. Who just watched a Rodney Dangerfield movie and uh, and get up there and try it. But yeah, it's not, uh, yeah, it's, it's more fun to go and talk about stuff you want to talk about than try to... Uh, Get something going with an innocent bystander. You know what's perplexing about you, Mr. Pride? No. Uh, probably amongst, not us just locally, but in terms of Canadian comics, by far the best writer, and this is known, this isn't tooting your horn, you know this, you're probably the, the no. best writer we've had in a very long time. Uh, mm. One of the best we have now, for sure. Well, thank you. That's you, you know this is true. Canadian Comedy Award winner, right? No, nominee. Nominee. To Which me, is even better. Even better. Because uh, yeah, because I don't, <laughs> I don't want to. I can't take the pressure of someone giving you a title or something. So it's easier to say, ah, you was in the top so and so that year. But you churn out stuff that's relevant so quickly. Like I see you change your stuff up. You'll go, you'll test things out. You'll talk about stuff that's topical, but they'll be funny. It's not like oh, it's topical. I need more time to work on it to make it funny. It's like you already know where you're going with. You're very quick on getting this stuff out. Mm-hmm. I'm very surprised that you decided. Uh, I like Canada. I'm not going to go to New York because I feel like you would have dominated that scene, especially when it comes to the late night writers. You're much quicker on the draw, I find, in mm. terms of your content that you're putting on stage than a lot of times they are in their monologues. Well, the thing about comedy writing in that sort of like a late show format or something, like the deadline pressure is crazy. And I don't like deadline pressure that much. Like it's very. When you have like a, a week, two weeks between open mics, it's it's way easier, I find, to take your time and come up with something. And you don't even have to, it's an open mic. You don't even have to show. You don't even have to show up if you don't have anything. Just take the week off. So it's the pressure that set you off from moving to a place like that. Yeah. Well, also fam. I got the family, and I'm very I'm very happy with my lifestyle here. So, um, you know, you'd have to uproot it, everything. Yeah. You know, a friend of mine said who's who's doing very well in the states but he's he says that you go to new york it's minimum five years of just anonymous plugging away before before you even get the you know the sl- lowest tier of recognition um which is great for you know young person but uh, not i got the family yeah i don't want to <laughs> sorry kids i'm you're i'm, I'm leaving f- your adolescence i'm gonna be down there what about pre-family david pride 
Uh, yeah, I think I had, like, uh, I guess sort of ambitions that way. Um, but again, it was easier. Canada, I thought, was easier just to learn the ropes of stand-up. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess, I guess, you know, looking back, the pressure cooker of New York, probably, yeah, maybe I would have gotten better faster. But, um, but you, but maybe not, it would have really been like a starving artist situation. Uh, whereas Canada, you, you know, likely to at least while you're learning, you're making a, a few bucks here and there. Yeah. The, the, you know, the, it's a, a smaller, smaller pool. So it's not quite as backstabby or what, what have you. But it uh, is interesting though. I'm just, cause like I said, whenever I see you and, and you're like, Oh, I want to test this or other people, it's words. Even me, you know, I'll change a word. I'll put something in. And then you'll go up there and be like, fuck, I didn't see him do any of this stuff last time. Where is he churning this stuff out? And a lot of times it's relevant to that time, maybe that month or two months, something that happened. And it's just, you're there and you're already on it. I'm like, how the fuck is you writing this shit so quick? And he's already at the punchline. You know, that's the time it'll take us to just develop the premise. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to just um, fine tune the punchline. It's very, very surprising. Obviously, it's, it's amazing, but it's so it's so rare to see because a lot we wish like the rest of the comedians wish we could be that quick on the draw. You have it, and it feels like sometimes you don't even know it because when I tell you like fuck, that's pretty. You know, like where'd you think of? And you're like, oh, it's just just testing this out. I'm just yeah. trying my best. Well, I mean, again, you're, you're sort of sh- you. I kind of don't show up until it's kind of ready, ready to show. Yeah, I I, I uh, I've always felt for open mics like. I really wanted, if it's the first time I'm telling a joke, I want to really stack the chips in favor. I want to give that joke every chance to succeed. Uh, Because there's nothing worse than, like, you know, your new joke bombing, but you know it's because you flubbed this line or that line, or you hadn't figured out how to end it yet or something. But you still get that that uh you know, the the shame of the of the bombing joke. So you're gonna shy away from that now. Uh, I like it much more if it's if I know I rattled it off exactly how I wanted to, and then it bombs. Then I'm I'm great with that because it's like okay now I know I gave it the best shot I could, and the audience decided based they saw the best version of that, they voted thumbs down, and now I got a good sense of that. Oh, um, interesting. Yeah, as opposed to yeah, as opposed to uh, maybe I should have. Uh, I, I, yeah, I, this, I, I flubbed this word, I, this I line. I flubbed this word, this word. So you're not now sure if the bomb was, if you totally earned the bomb or if it's just because lack of preparation. I feel um, like lack of preparation causes me to uh, bomb new jokes a lot. Mm. Yeah, well, what I started not doing <laughs> anymore, I guess, is uh, stacking them together, right? Because if one doesn't work, go, you sh- I should go to something that's established that I know will work and then maybe go back to a new one. Yeah. But sometimes I'll pepper them in awkwardly within the set so people get confused. They're like, oh, that wasn't a punchline. And then another one will come. Like, yeah. He didn't have a punchline there either. What's this guy doing? But I'm just testing. You know, it's an open mic. I'm trying to, yeah, trying yeah. to feel them. Yeah, which I think that's all right, though. And it's, I, it's all right, but I like I like your strategy of making sure it's it's ready, stacking everything in its favor, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe do a strong one before so yeah. you know it's not you. You know that they're happy with you. Oh, yeah. And then you test it out. Yeah, I, I, I really uh, try to, to do a couple of established things right off the bat. And then find out get, get if they're not laughing at the established stuff, then you go into uh, the new stuff with kind of a little metric in your head, like okay, this this is my, this is not the hottest crowd. And then you take their feedback on the new stuff with a little bit of perspective and a, a grain of salt. And if they if they bust up at a new joke, then you think okay, that was a really good new joke because they didn't even like the old stuff. That's already working. Yeah. Yeah, I like this. this. That's happened to me once where I thought, okay, this is a bomb anyway. Let me try some, and one of the new stuff stuck, and now it's become part of the uh, part of the regular rotation. I was yeah. like, oh look, I didn't expect that. Oh yeah, it I caught me a, off guard. I had a good one last Tuesday, a good set that like it wasn't a good set. It was a bunch of new stuff, and a lot of it tanked. But a lot, but you had like one that I just thought of that day, and I kind of threw it out early, and it got a, a boom. Like I think it got an applause break. It was like, oh cool. And then when my other stuff that I'd kind of had gestating for a couple of weeks, I was like, finally, I'm going to present this stuff. And it didn't do very well. Um, but it still, the night felt like a win anyway, because it was, I, I was happy that I got that one applause break joke. Now that, that one's now up on the shelf now, like 
or on the shelf, I guess, off the shelf. It's now in circulation. It's, it's on the team now. It's on it's the off team. The bench. Uh, well, and we'll see how long that lasts because, of course, you know they don't they don't always. Uh, oh, that's the truth. They don't always. Uh, yeah, go two for two. But um, but then, but I, and I also liked that the jokes I was excited about. Like it's nice to get that reality check, and uh, and they didn't do terrible. It was it was. I find it interesting when they're not doing great, but the, but but like one line in the setup got a laugh, and you're just like, okay, well there's, there's life there. The joke wasn't good, but there's something there's something here, and uh, yeah, I just love I just love uh, I just love finding out stuff on stage. Are you still as comfortable now uh, testing stuff out, or are you less comfortable, more comfortable? Because you got to see, I guess, different waves of different comedy fans that go to clubs. Mm. Uh, I know and I've been doing it, what, six years now, and five, six years, yeah, six years, and I see different ways. There's a different type of audience member that sits at the club now mm -hmm. than there was six years ago. And I find that um, certain people, it's... Things that wouldn't trigger them before wouldn't affect them in a negative way. Yeah. Do now. Sure. Uh, and I find myself overthinking certain jokes now because, like, oh, while I'm writing, I think, who's this going to piss off? Mm -hmm. Something I would never think about in the past. And even though I wasn't thinking about it, I wouldn't get negative reactions. Mm -hmm. Whereas now, even though I put more thought into it, it's a whole different set of people that come to these shows. And I got to, th oh, this guy's going to get pissed. They're mad. They Sometimes they get mad about things that I'm shocked about. Yeah. Uh, this isn't even offensive. Yeah. So I uh, do. You, have you noticed a different wave, and does it affect your writing, or at least your thinking, going onto the stage? Yep. Um, but it's but not. I try not to get too. Wor uh, try not to get too worried about it because I think it's always been that game is that you go on stage and you find out what the audience wants and you tweak it and stuff. So uh, even though even if audiences are more sensitive now, it feels. I mean that's just part of the job. You just adapt to where they're at. That's why I'm. I really like. Like I think the only hope that I have of staying current is to just keep going out once a week or every couple of weeks to try the stuff and just and just keep up with what 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 the audience is telling you. And you know, so I could never you know take a year off and then like dust off the old act and now I, I'm bringing it out like <laughs> and then get hit in the face because because. Uh, yeah, yeah, because my my chemo dyslexia joke is is uh, uh, yeah doesn't work anymore. I don't know. <laughs> that, that, that that joke doesn't exist. That's a that was an example. <laughs> it should I exist. Don't, I don't know what chemo dyslexia means, but it, it, you you've got you have you had some negative uh, experiences recently on uh, yeah? trying new jokes? Yeah. Oh, not oh yeah. Well, it wasn't even new jokes. It we'll, was we'll try new try new jokes. You get negative in the sense they don't laugh. But oh, that's, but that's par for the course. That's gonna yeah. But no, I've never like. Uh, but I guess uh, you know I do most of the open mics are at Comedy Nest where and it feels like that that vibe. Everyone kind of gets it, gets the the procedures, so that I don't find they get very offended at jokes there they kind of yeah, it's much more it happened uh, it's happened on the weekend sometimes but it's no, more on more the more. weekends sure but i think the tuesday i think they, they kind of get it that okay they're just trying yeah. this stuff out so they'll they'll not laugh but they're not gonna uh, at least i've found i haven't found stuff held against me but yeah on the weekends i've gotten some <laughs> blowback um and it's weird it's uh because on the weekends is when you're taking out the stuff that you have confidence in and then you get get this weird reaction that you haven't gotten before you're also not a uh, like a button pusher you're not an aggressive uh comic that's why it's hilarious because yeah if it's happening to you um where it's just fun behind everything that you're saying it's so ludicrous to think what's going to happen to other people who go on with a bit of an edge mm -hmm. you know who go on with a bit of a of a want to disrupt yeah and if it's happening to you <laughs> yeah no it's it is kind of funny because yeah i like talking about topics I mean, you know, just in like the last three years or so, I've got more attracted to touching on touchy subjects. But, uh, but yeah, it's never been a case of oh, I'm I'm gonna go out there and offend people. Like, I don't want to offend anybody. I want everybody to see see that it's funny the way I see it. And you know, and sometimes they won't, and then you sort of adjust that way. But uh, yeah, like I I hate to sort of it be misunderstood. Like, oh, you're just a shock. You're just trying to shock people. And upset people and push buttons. I don't really know any comics on the scene that that's their goal. 
or at least I don't, I don't hang out. I, I don't know. I don't yeah. know anybody who that's their goal. I don't uh, think so either. I don't know how you mention it. Yeah. A lot of us do get in trouble for like, oh, that was offensive. But I don't know any of us that um, actively pursue trying to piss someone off, which is why I find it strange that um, as comedians, like our goal, I know your goal is the same as mine. You want to have fun out there. You want them to laugh with you. You want to enjoy that experience with them. I said something that I'm hoping you will get. We're yeah. going to laugh about it together and we move forward. Yeah. It's it's tricky when the person who's trying to make you laugh, trying to give you some of that happiness, gets a nice fuck you at the end of it, and you tell him how you you know he hurt your feelings or when he doesn't know you from mm-hmm. you know a lot of these jokes that I say, I don't know who's gonna be in the audience, right? Yeah, I don't know your your children was allergic to gluten, for example, or something. Just yeah, yeah. You know when I made that gluten joke, just I don't oh. know if I have any gluten jokes, but you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Um, or that chemo dyslexia. Or the thing. chemo dyslexia joke. I don't know you personally, and yet you are taking it personally. When all, my only goal was to let you unwind, yeah, let yeah. you laugh about something. Yeah, well, and that's it. When I, I mean, I know for me, when I, if I'm t- talking about something, you know, like racism or something that's that could be considered edgy or whatever, it's it's uh, sort of with the idea. I want to kind of bring it out into the light, and I don't know. I'm a big believer in like that. It's a awful world full of awful things, and laughing at some of this stuff really helps. And um, and there is a sort of a risk reward benefit to it. If you if you can do something that's sort of looks like it's dangerous territory, and then you get the laugh. First of all, it feels great for you on stage, and and the audience they they give it a pretty rich laugh because they appreciate it. Well, because or they don't even maybe they don't they didn't know they appreciated it, but, you know, comedy is all about tension, right? You wind, the setup is winding up the tension and the punchline is releasing it, and boom. And if you're talking about something kind of scary, then that tension gets wound up more. And if it works, the the release is that much bigger. And I've, I've found that, like, uh, you know, touching on something and then, you know, the audience is quiet and kind of, ner- kind of, ooh, where is he? going with this and then the payoff is that much bigger partly because maybe they're relieved like oh my god i thought i was going to be upset by that thank like you're kind of like thank god he stuck the landing it's like watching a tightrope act like just oh what if he uh-oh. bombs yeah. oh man i hope he doesn't get killed <laughs> oh okay we can all relax now so uh you know so that's that's uh tricky but that's kind of the motivation that's why you know because i think it's tempting to say well why why do you have to talk about this stuff well First of all, none of us have to talk about any of this stuff. Yeah, um, that's what we're choosing to. Yeah, we're choosing to, and and that's the reason. It's just because there's, and nine times out of ten, a tricky topic's gonna bomb because it's a tricky topic and it's just hard to do. But it's, I think it's worth the risk to to risk that just just to get that one in ten payoff. That's really cool. Um, so do the, you think it's, we're entering a new age of comedy? Well, I don't know. About that, but I think like what you were asking before about if the audience is different now, there is, there is a sensitivity now, and there is more of a, a blowback when people are offended by stuff. And my big worry about it is, uh, you know, I'm saying you know nine out of ten of these tough jokes don't land, but the one out of ten is worth it. But it feels like maybe audiences are now. Because of this sort of uh, you know Twitter hate gen- generation or whatever, right. that those nine out of ten no no those we're gonna punish you for those nine out of ten and you try to explain like no 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 I was just trying that out Th- that joke's gone now and it's like no no you should never have said it in the first place. It's such a ridiculous thing. Well, it's yeah it's that's why I'm, that's the type of censorship I'm most afraid of is not censoring bad jokes but if if the process if people start sabotaging the process and going to open mics with their phones and videoing someone saying something and it tanking and then like say hey look at look at that look at this homophobe and put it up online that's it then you're on a split screen yeah on the cnn and you're trying to explain (laughs) mr pride why do you hate the gays (laughs) exactly (laughs) i heard i read um it was an interview or something but uh i think chris rock i would think was complaining about this that you know he's goes to the comedy cellar to try out to work out stuff and he was saying that, yeah, people people will, you know, film him and and then attack him for stuff that he was just trying out. And that's like it's like people, it's it's funny. Once in a while, you meet someone that just 
really thinks that we go up on stage with all the answers, with it all set up. Like, yeah. this one's funny, this one's funny, this one's funny. This one's going to piss you off. This yeah, yeah. Gonna... And this one, and this was a big F you. And, uh, um, yeah, I know I was, I was talking to someone years ago uh, who had just seen me do a show, and, and she just sort of innocently asking, hey, that, I saw you do that one joke, and, and nobody laughed at it. Why did you tell that one? <laughs> and it's like I want to bring myself back down to reality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That was a little uh, <laughs> no, but it's amazing because I try to yeah try to explain like oh yeah no well I thought I thought it, I thought it would work so I said it and it did, and why did you think it will don't you know and it's like no uh, and not really you try try stuff out what do you mean you try stuff out and then I then I blew her mind by saying you know Jerry Seinfeld goes on and tries new stuff out sometimes. Why he doesn't know he's Jerry Seinfeld? He should know, and uh, you know. So people have to know it's the whole trial and error is the whole. But that's I, the name of the game. You know why I think there's less leniency. They don't because if you were looking at it from a perspective of okay, they're putting these things together, they're talking about these topics, in order to try and make it funny, and people don't see that anymore. People only look at specific words. Mm-hmm. Which is a problem because they could shut off and make a decision yeah. and make a judgment on you just based on a word. Yeah, yeah. You know, whether that, you know, nowadays, you know, gay isn't, uh, no, it's not a trigger word for anybody. But uh, now we have, for example, racism is back in the news again. Mm-hmm. So if you make a joke about racism, making fun of the racist, the fact that you're talking about racism, they're, they're already set to that judgment. Oh, yeah. They're like, this is a racist. Or transphobia is big now, too. Yeah. You enter that realm without listening to the context of the joke, without listening to the actual content of this is what I'm trying to say, and uh, you know we're making fun of this situation. It's happening in real life. Let's bring it to light. They only focus on the specific words. Oh, mm-hmm. this is a this. Look at this. This is on the board right there. This is taboo. You can't talk about this right now. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna hate this person for even bringing it up, regardless of where they stand on it. Because in my opinion, I don't really care where you're gonna stand on it. If you can make it funny and try to make me laugh at your per- uh, perception of it, yeah. I'll laugh, I'll be on board with that. Because like I said, I don't really know any comedians that go up there with the intention of hurting feelings. But if you're just going to shut off because they're talking about a certain subject, th- that's what comedy is about, right? Wasn't it supposed... Uh, when I got into it, it was all about uh, talking about things and making and light and laughing about things that sometimes were a bit more serious, sometimes they would bother people, even myself. There were certain things that I got to talk about on stage... Uh, that I saw the humor of it that used to bother me. And I was like, hey, you know what? It's, you know, I don't have to take things that seriously. I could laugh about it. I could laugh at myself. Sure. I don't have to be so serious. Uh, and now it's, again, it's a word will make the judge. It's like just reading the title of a book and deciding whether it's bad or not, if it's racist or not, if it's, uh, it's going to hurt you. Read the book. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, the, the, the light at the end of the tunnel for that is I, I still think it's not the whole audience. I think there's enough people in the audience that that see what you're doing at least it's my experience the shows i've been doing there's as long as you get that critical mass of people who are like it's okay and then i kind of don't if someone says they tuned out then i kind of stop caring about them yeah it's like you know i can't i sort of tuned out after after you brought up this topic and then it's like well okay so What's like? Why am I listening to you? Yeah, because if you, a topic's turning you off, there's nothing to discuss. Because we're gonna discuss that topic, yeah. and you're already gonna zone out. Yeah, and again, and again, it's it's sort of your job to keep the audience engaged and stuff. So if you're consistently turning off everybody, then you've got a problem. But if it's if the jokes seem to be working, but then you get you know blowback from some individuals, and you're kind of like, yeah, I, I I can't worry about that i'm taking care of these other people these other people yeah, that, that are are laugh <laughs> like i really think the people that laugh at jokes are at least as important as the people who that, are offended by jokes and there's more laughing i, I somebody told me this uh, a couple of days ago oh, i think it was a comedian because like, oh that's a good point I go it's not that people are uh, more offended it's just that the people that are, are actually offended and are looking to be victims are now louder because yeah. the medium exists for them, right? They have the internet, you know, they have Twitter, they can make blogs. 
there's a platform that exists for them to be loud yeah. and to yell and say things and make accusations that didn't exist before. So they're just louder because generally people have a good time. They'll laugh. They'll shake your hand. After, they'll go home. They're not going to go out and be like, it was so amazing. I, they won't. However, the ones that get angry will write blog posts, will try to dissect what you were talking about, where your head was at. Yeah. If you made a joke about pedophiles, does that mean that you are a pedophile? Things like that. Yeah. They'll dissect random things and they're louder. It doesn't mean that necessarily that's what people believe, but they'll be so loud that people will listen to them. And they'll be like, oh, why is this? Oh, well, maybe David Pride uh, has a problem with uh, the Mexicans. I don't know. That's what yeah, this yeah. blog says. Yeah. Seems legit. And then it starts that snowball. But in general, that's what it, they're just louder. Mm -hmm. But I know from shows that the majority of the crowd is in on it. They're, they're laughing. They're having a good time. And then you get those odd stuff at the end. Hey, uh, that was funny, but I didn't like the, the joke about that. Yeah. Oh, well, it was for you. That's why I did it. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you didn't like it. It was specifically for you. Yeah, exactly. It's so crazy. Yeah, it happens. Uh, I mean, certainly happened more than once when you get that person coming up uh, and, uh, you know, they say they have a problem with one of your jokes. Hey, I didn't, I didn't like that joke about Braille. I thought was offensive. It's sensitive. And then, and then I, I usually... You know, in my, I mean, I'm engaged. I'm gonna be polite and stuff. But in my mind, I'm like, okay, so that's set. Where I mentioned the death penalty, the deaf child, the, and I sort of lift through. But you just, but the, it was the Braille one, which so you're cool with everything else. It's like, okay, I mean, it, it's it. Everybody, and that's it. Everybody's got their own line. I've got my own lines to cross, like that. You know, that I'm not gonna laugh at certain things. But that, but once. It's funny because everyone everyone will laugh at stuff until it hits their particular thing, and then oh, I'd better I'd better speak to them about this because they've, and uh, yeah. Anyway, it's the lines are in weird places. I was at the communist the weekend where uh, Abdul Butt uh, went on right before me and he got popcorn thrown at him mm -hmm. because he was talking about uh, the election and Hillary Clinton and he had a good joke about it, right? About and a woman got really mad because he was making fun of. Uh, you know, this potential female president. And she got so mad that she threw popcorn on him, right? Mm -hmm. That set her off. I went on with a lot of harder stuff. I was talking about, you know, kids in sweatshops and that, which she was laughing at. Mm. So she was on board for kids in sweatshops. Yeah. But yeah. making fun of Hillary Clinton is where she drew the line. Yeah. And it was me. I was thinking about it after. I was like, where are they drawing? And his, I find his jokes were, that was way funnier than mine in the sense that it was topical and I like what he did. With the joke, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the joke wasn't appreciated at all. Yeah. Talked about Hillary Clinton, you're the enemy. Yeah. It's just absurd. But you're on board for kids uh, <laughs> building stuff in sweatshops. That's yeah. fine with you. It's the We don't know where the line is now with certain people. That's what's crazy. Well, I uh, do you know uh, you know my joke about uh, mentioning cancer on stage? Yes. See, that one's become... That one <laughs> is kind of like my thesis statement joke now. Like that, I put that on in the first 10 minutes or so. so. And... Uh, where I say, yeah, I mentioned the cancer on stage, and a woman says you can't joke. If you're going to joke about a health issue, you make damn sure it's a funny one. Well, what's a health issue? I don't know. Like, uh, or what's a funny health issue? Something like uh, erectile dysfunction. And I said, fuck you. And <laughs> gets a huge <laughs> laugh. And the whole point of that joke is that we're la everyone's got their hierarchy of yeah. this. I, this is okay to laugh at. This isn't. This, but everyone's got your hierarchy, and and. And that's it. And the audience doesn't doesn't know they're making a statement when they laugh. They're just laughing because it's an erectile dysfunction joke and it's self deprecating and stuff like that. But I kind of I kind of hold on to that joke as like this is this is my in a nutshell in twenty five seconds this is my view of comedy. And it's insane because it shouldn't even we shouldn't take it as a statement. Just like they shouldn't take our jokes as a statement in the sense that I'm joking about this. You know, yeah, it's not yeah. a statement of how I feel about a certain um, I, I'm just using the politics as it's so simple to get across to people. You could make fun of Hillary Clinton or Trump and not dislike them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like I make fun of both of them because I don't like them, but it doesn't mean that I could I would make fun of one and not like that person. Yeah. You know, um, but they, they view everything as a statement. It can't just be a joke. Yeah. Yeah. When that's our jobs. But actors don't get in trouble when they play the roles of pedophiles. People aren't picketing outside their house and being like, this guy's a pedophile. I saw him. He played the role of one. Yeah. They take it for the art that it is. Yeah. But with us, they're extra critical. Yeah. It's, uh, well, that's it. It's, it's sort of confusing joking about something with making fun of something. 
uh, people don't really make that distinction. If you're talking about something, you could have any number of infinite inroads and viewpoints on it. Um, but still a lot of people think, no, like you were saying, oh, you bring up that topic, then I'm, I'm out. I don't, don't want to hear it. You're, you're making, you know, you're making light of a serious topic. Well, that's, it's like Tommy Tiernan said that once, like, yeah, it's kind of the job description. It's the jokes. Yeah. We're not trying to change your perception on the topic. I'm not trying to get you to vote for somebody else. I'm not trying to get you to, uh, like a certain type of people that you weren't liking before or anything like that. Yeah. It's just a matter of let's laugh about certain things. Like, we're, we're all... Like, let's look at it at a bigger picture than comedy. Our time on the planet here is very limited, mm-hmm. right? If you think about it, if you think about your own mortality, it's very limited. <laughs> how, and no matter how old you, even if you're 120, it's still a pretty limited amount of time in the grand scale of things. How do you want to, that's how I think about a lot when I'm like, oh, am I going to piss somebody off? Or, how do you want to spend that time? I do want to laugh. I want to make people laugh. Uh, I, I want to try to smile as much as I can. Just enjoy myself. I don't know when this is going to be over. While I'm here, let's enjoy the ride. But when you're trying your best to fight, to feel miserable, like I'm going in there, and if anything offends me, I'm going to write about it. Why do you want that sour feeling, that that dark cloud of uh, anxiety, depression, to be following you everywhere? Why yeah. don't you just want to have a good time? And yeah. I'm not saying make light of you. If somebody's actually bothering you, if somebody's going out of their way to bother you, of course you address it. But in a room where people are going up to tell jokes, to try to make your week a little bit better, mm-hmm. why take things out of context mm-hmm. and try your best to anger other people and rile them up and then create this negative lining around something that initially started as just let's talk about uh, something that uh, that will make us laugh yeah. and let's address real issues that people are stressed about whether it's work whether it's your politician whether it's fool schooling anything that it could be i know they stress you out let's talk let's make fun of it let's laugh about it. that's how it started that's let's talk about these tab- taboo subjects sex whatever it is and let's have a good laugh mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and it just something deviated along the way yeah it's funny that I mentioned the Braille earlier. Like that, that example came to mind because uh, someone actually did come up to me after and, and you know, said, I, uh, hey, that joke about Braille. I'm like, oh, here it comes. They've got, uh, they know someone visually impaired. They're upset <laughs> about that. And she was like, my father lost two fingers <laughs> in, a, in a wood shop accident. I don't appreciate jokes about Braille, like touching things. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's like, whoa. It's so insane. Oh, man, you can't win. How the fuck? <laughs> That's actually what someone and she was just and then she walked away. She's like, so that. So she wasn't even no, trying no. to joke around. She was just no, like, no. She was she was just like, just so you know that that jokes doesn't fly with me like or something because of the thing. Don't joke about touching things because my dad can't touch things. That's you see what I mean. That level mm-hmm. that would be the equivalent almost of me getting mad at everything and be like, hey, uh, my grandparents died. They can't enjoy coke. Why are you talking about coke? <laughs> They're dead now, huh? <laughs> What do you think the dead think? It's just you could draw that parallel with anything if you really want to go to that extreme. But they're not really connected. And I even say when you feel something personal, the comedians, very rare did they think about that joke right there to piss you off. They don't know you're going to even be there. Mm-mm. So you can't take it personally because we're not saying it to personally offend you. Yeah, yeah. We're talking about things that we think are funny. It's just they're just topics. That's what always got to me is it, early on I figured out that people, a lot of people go to shows with – Um, this weird understanding of what stand-up is Mm -hmm. because they would come to me and ask me about a specific joke and be like, you know, uh, why would you talk about that? Like, It would confuse me. I don't know you. I've never met you. Why would you assume that this is personal? Mm -hmm. Like I saw you in the audience and developed a joke on the spot and said it to her. It's so absurd. And how would I know that everybody else would be on board and they would laugh but not you? It's, It's such a crazy way of seeing things like everybody's against you when in reality, it's nothing to do with that. It, it's, it's, it's not really about uh, hurting somebody out there. It, it's about them in, um, in a blanket statement. It's about the audience and getting them to react and to laugh. That's what it's about. It's definitely not about having them come backstage after the show and tell you off, right? Sometimes yeah. we'll laugh about it because it could be a dumb statement like what you just said. But other times, I, if I see that I really did bother somebody, I th- sometimes it makes me think about, should I change a word in that joke? Sure. You know, I'll be like, fuck, did I, I really didn't mean it that way. You'll you'll get a different perception and be like fuck okay I don't maybe I should change something in that it, it's it's made me change uh, a lot of wording in certain jokes just to make it clear that I'm not trying to hurt somebody. Where back in the day, like I said when I first started out, I would never think about that at all. Yeah, I have that too, and it's it's sort of funny because um, I had someone came up who had a problem with with one of my jokes and sort of said maybe you should you know change change it. 
so that it's uh, you're making more of so that you can't be misunderstood that you're making this point or that point or whatever. And I listened, and she was very polite and articulate, and and so I listened. But and then at the end of it, I was like, you know what? I, maybe I'll think about it. I'll think about doing it that way. But but just so you know, to be honest, I'm in the middle of a weekend now. It's been working every night. I'm gonna finish out the weekend doing it just <laughs> the way I'm doing it. But you know, and then maybe I'll revisit it afterwards. But you know, thanks for talking to me about it. But you know, and we'll we'll see what happens. But I'm I'm kind of not. I'm gonna leave it alone because if I try it your way and it bombs, and I, I'm <laughs> not interested in it. Then I'm coming after you. Yeah, you no, ruined my so. career. You ruined my career. But. Uh, yeah, so which is weird, which is, I don't know how she took it. Like, she's like, oh, okay. Like, it's kind of a weird, I agree with you, but I'm not. But that's such a it. good compromise. Where else can you go to the artist and have them even consider compromising for you? Yeah. yeah. You can't go to a Hollywood picture and be like, I don't like the way this is shot. It makes people with vertigo dizzy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, they're going to tell you to go fuck yourself. <laughs> that's how it's shot. Yeah, yeah. Whereas us, at least, if it's reasonable, like I said, there's certain tags I've taken out. Because uh, somebody told me it's the tag that's making it offensive, mm-hmm. right? But mm-hmm. you already have the punchline. So I would think about it and be like, sure. you know what? It doesn't even need the tag. It's working with, just with the punchline. So I'll remove the tag. And I don't really get complaints for that joke. Actually, I haven't gotten a complaint for the specific joke that I'm thinking. It's one of my closers. Um, the one with Milton in prison. Mm-hmm. Uh, I haven't had any complaints since I removed the tag. And it was comedians backstage that were telling me, you know what I think is hurting? It's the tag. The tag, the tag makes the joke look homophobic. It yeah. just flips it around. Yeah. Remove the tag and you're fine. Just end it there. Yeah, yeah. And that was just a bit of... I wasn't like, no, this is fucking how it's going to go. Yeah, yeah. I thought about it. I go, okay, it's very easy to make that distinction if, you're, if you don't know me and you're just looking at it from the audience perspective. So I'll accommodate. I'll change it. That's why we're not... It's not like we're bullies. You know, we're trying. We all have that will to want to please them and yeah. want them to have a good time. Yeah. So we're willing to make that sacrifice. I won't just go out and write a blog about an audience member and be like, this fucking asshole <laughs> didn't laugh at the joke. It's because he hates comedy. He hates freedom. You know, I, the same way they react to us of, you know, he made a joke. It was about Greeks. He's a fucking racist. He hates Greeks. That's what they'll do. They'll hear something. They'll just overreact a lot of these people. Yeah, yeah. Minority, though. That's, it is the minority. I have noticed that. It, they are the, in the minority. It's just that they're so loud. Yeah, it's a... Uh and it is weird because you do, you do. I mean, I do end up siding, like I said earlier, sort of the critical mass. If, if, because I don't, I don't really pay attention to individuals. Um, I just, I just, I just listen to that amorphous group sitting in front of you, and just the audience. You know, uh, the beast in the dark. Some Shakespeare nuts called it once or whatever. But yeah, you just listen to that the feedback of the group just if they you know yeah. sigh and laugh and stuff like that and individual opinions you know you can listen to them and take an interest in them but you you know you don't you don't capsize a whole well exactly that's thing. we don't know that's the other thing is we don't know uh, a lot of people think oh I, i'm crossing my arms right now i'm upset he's gonna notice he'll change his tune uh, we don't know until you either write a blog or come tell us after the show that something bothered you because unless we're bombing completely Unless I'm bombing and the whole crowd is angry and there's a reason yeah, for me yeah. to notice. If everybody's <laughs> having a good time except one person in the back, how am I going to, from 130 people, how am I going to find that one person? I don't know. So to me, I'm like, man, I had a great set. And then when that one person comes, I'll either consider it or I'll be like, okay, you're an idiot. Just leave the club. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, You know my uh, joke about um, watching my kid from the bushes? That's hilarious. Yeah, it's sort of a big, big long story about me Yeah, watching... It's a hot day, so I go in the bushes to get some shade, and now I'm watching my child play from the bushes, and it's a whole big misunderstanding story. Yeah. And very early on, it might have been the first week I started doing that joke, and this is it's a very old joke now. Like time flies so much, but yet you know stuff you consider new. You, and because you, you add, because you tweak, and you make it, so it's. I guess so. It's been kind of in its current form for a while, but it very like it was the first weekend that I was doing it. I was closing with it regularly because it was doing really well but i did that i did it at uh, the works and uh and while i was telling the joke everyone's laughing at, at the you know the lines that are, the laugh lines there it's going well and it's building momentum and it's good and there there was one woman like off to the side with like little sad tears coming out of her eyes tears and, like and and not you know not laughing so hard i could cry she was like this was really like upsetting her like you know, a little, a little, you know, moist eyes and a little, and just looking uncomfortable and sad. And I, 
you know, I kept going because obviously, yeah, cause, yeah, because yeah, <laughs> I got the crowd. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, and I, I built it up to the crescendo, and it did great, and I got applause and got off stage, and it was great. And but I sort of, you know, I glanced, you know, <laughs> looking back, I glanced, and she didn't do anything, and and I never spoke to her after that. The crowd, she didn't come. Th- no, I would have loved to find out what. Yeah, I don't think I wanted to find out. I was like, "Whoa, what? What happened there?" But that was a. Uh, but yeah, it was a case like what? I got arrested for looking at my kids in the bushes. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know, but something. But that's a case where like, oh my god! And I told another comic about it, and they were like, "Oh man, that's you know that happened to me once." And this other comic actually stopped doing a joke because it seemed to upset no. one person. And I no, I, I will never fold that way. Le- like I said, if if everybody like if the majority is liking it. I'm gonna keep doing the joke. Yeah. I'm gonna keep, and if I could make an adjustment to not have people misunderstand me, I'll do that too. I'll compromise, right? It makes the joke better. I find if there's nothing that could be misinterpreted. Sure. But I will not stop doing a joke that works because one per fuck that. Yeah. Well, if I had, you know, that was my first weekend doing the joke, and it's uh, served me well for years uh, since. And you gotta just add up, you know, the hundreds of people or the thousands, maybe it's up to that have laughed at the joke that. You know, wouldn't have laughed at it if you had just cut it off because you didn't quite know what was going on with it that. It could have lady. even been unrelated. It could you imagine been. she was thinking of something else, yeah. but you, you, for years, you would stop doing the joke because yeah, you think yeah, it hurts yeah. people? Yeah. And then you meet her years later. She's like, I saw you at the comedy works that it was very sad for me. I had lost my father that <laughs> yeah. week. So I was crying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Nothing to do with the joke. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It could happen. It could happen. I mean, yeah, it could have been. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. But, uh, Anyway, that's all back to the whole, like, you know, the, the people, la- you know, give the people laughing the benefit of the doubt and, yeah. you know, be open, be open to f- feedback, but don't, don't, yeah, don't uh, throw in the towel over one, you know, one person. It's, it's funny also when uh, sometimes people kind of approach you like that you're somehow abusing your, this great platform that you've been given to, uh, to inform and create, make the world a better place. Yeah. And that, I had that, that happen. I used to have a death penalty joke. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I haven't done it in a long time, but, you know, it, it did well. It got, got laughs. It was dark, of course, but it was, it got laughs. And that one, that was one of the few times I got an email. Somebody emailed me, like... Electronic mail. Yeah, electronic mail. Electronic hyphen mail. Um, and, uh, they, they, she was one of a group of people that were at the show, and, and again, very art, polite and articulate, so that was great, uh, you know, very enjoyed the show, but uh, when we took issue with that joke, um, some of us, I think they had some connection, some of us have, are social workers that have worked with this, and, uh, and I think it, it behooves you to sort of acknowledge that many people are executed wrongly every year, um, for crimes they didn't commit, and so when you talk, so and and she was kind of saying like, so you really should tell your joke, but then address that point so that the audience knows. And I just like wrote back, said, yeah, no, nah, there's nothing funny about that. I'm not gonna, <laughs> I'm not if I if I think of something funny about what you just said, fine, <laughs> but I'm not gonna deep six the whole bring everybody down with yeah. a public service <laughs> announcement. It's so crazy. Um, but that's again, that's sort of a weird. Again, like you're saying, people not quite sure what we're supposed to be doing up there. Um, thinking, uh, you hear that too, like people kind of wrongly equate comedy with journalism. Like, yeah. hey, hey, that's a very one sided joke you're taking. You got to, now you got to address the other side and balance it out. And it's like, no, you, I mean, again, if you can think of two ways to go, that that's excellent. If you yeah. can make both it's sides funnier. of it funny, that's brilliant. But you don't, uh, there's no uh, journalistic standard of fair time and balance, especially if half of it is funny and the other half is just... It's just they keep putting us... It's it's strange what you said because it's true. They, they hold us up to a, stir, a certain standard that is confusing. It's like they forget what we're supposed to be doing because yeah. they don't hold us up to the same standard as they would a, um, uh, I don't know, a TV show personality or a cartoon, or other people that are in the same field of making you laugh, it's just funny. Mm -hmm. They hold us up to the standard of politicians and journalists, which is insane, because I'm up there not trying to balance the budget. 
I'm up there telling dick jokes to make mm. your week go by a little bit better, right? To make mm. you laugh a bit. And yet you're holding the same standard. You're like, oh, I disapprove of that. I don't think you should be using that microphone to be talking about things of the, that nature. I, I'm not running for political office. Yeah, yeah. I'm just here to help you unwind. I'm the I'm the equivalent of whatever cartoon you put on, whatever movie you put on to try to entertain you. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about um, more uh, sensitive topics and things that might make you think and you might go home thinking about something. That's great. If I was able to make you think about a social issue that you didn't think about before in a mm-hmm. positive manner, shit, that's an extra. Yeah. But it's not our main goal. Our main goal is just to loosen you up, just to help you have a good time. That's it. Yeah, my, my favorite compliment I, I ever got was, uh, like, you made me laugh at things I didn't know I could laugh at, which is awesome. And it's like you say, that that could be thought-provoking and, and a little extra value to the show. But, but uh, yeah, I think the worst thing you could do is go on stage with the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to change hearts and minds here. Like, no, what you do is you just, you go, you do the joke and hope that it sticks to the point where they'll think about it in a different in a yeah. socially conscious way i guess yeah and if they laugh at it maybe that's enough just to jog like what the person said like you made me laugh at things i could i didn't think i could laugh at maybe i mean that might make them think about it and yeah. and that's that's great but like you say it's sort of a side effect it's kind of a a bonus if that happens i know that mike mayo when i first started had a joke about uh, kids in ethiopia Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And, I know you remember? The one. and it's funny because until I had heard that joke, I had never really taken the time to think about how stupid um, a lot of the stuff we say and those infomercials are, right? When there's somebody standing right next to them and like, what do you, what do you want me to do with an email? You know, things like that. Yeah. Uh, so even though I la- it was a great joke, I laughed. It also made me more conscious. So whenever something, a tragedy would come, and you know, you could, there's, way, there's easy ways of donating through text and that. I would second guess who I'm sending the money to and then make a decision because I'd be like, no, no, no. Is it the Red Cross? Is it, who am I going to give it to? Let's sure. see who's actually sending the money to these people and helping out. Mm-hmm. But that started to come, a, a tragedy that happened shortly after that joke, because that joke made me think, oh, fuck, it's true. I don't really think about, like, who's getting this? Where's the money going? Why is this guy uh, fully dressed, rich, next to this hungry kid and not feed? You know, all that stuff started to think in my head. Sure. And it only affected me later, and it was a joke that triggered it, right? But it yeah. wasn't making fun of... Of you know, don't help these people. It was making fun of the situation that we're all in and that we see every day, yeah. but don't really give it a second thought. Yeah. So sometimes it does affect. It does make you uh, more aware of something, mm-hmm. and you're still laughing at it, right? Yeah. But I'm not laughing at the victims. I'm not. I'm not laughing because these kids don't have any food. I'm laughing at how ridiculous we've turned this situation. Right? It's all a show. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. all a show. And, that, and that's completely worth bringing up on stage. If yeah. you have a joke about that, that's a excellent thing to. Make a make a joke about and make a comment about. Um, do you know my uh, my abortion joke? Uh, have you ever heard that one? Which it's, one? Is it's that? kind of it's a rant where I say I'm, I'm I have an abortion joke, but I'm not sure if I should go through with it. And then and then it just it becomes a little like two. And you abort the joke? It's it sorry, it, but it's two minutes basically of me agonizing over the decision of whether or not to go through the abortion <laughs> joke, and and so it's just all like stupid little like turns of phrase that are just and basically it's it's yeah I'm, the joke is like a baby I'm deciding whether or not to have or whatever and it's funny because I did I did that in Toronto, and uh, early on in the setup like a woman yelled out at me and just said if you. If you you know if you're not a woman you don't have an opinion on this or something like <laughs> something like that. Um, it's not how that works. And well, I, I just sort of asked the woman in the front row, "Is you okay if I keep doing this?" Okay, it's okay. I can I can keep doing it. Right. And then I continued the thing, and you know it did well. It's a very it's a very you know a weird little joke, but people got into it. It was a late late show Friday thing, so it was good. Everyone laughed, but it was that was cool because then that girl came up to me. After the show, the one that told you not to do it, the one that yelled out, "Don't do it," and she said, "You know what? That was a really good joke. I thought I knew where you were going with it, and that was uh, no. I, I'm like, yeah, I take it back. That you, that was really interesting what you did up there. And um, I like that she didn't zone out. Yeah, but also, why did she disrupt the show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. <sighs> eh? It's things like that 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 reactive nature. Uh, oh, I'm I'm gonna. I'm going to stop you all here from getting hurt. Yeah, I'm yeah. stop this villain. You don't know where we're going with this. And also, why wouldn't you have an opinion of something everybody has? Now, whether you're informed, correct about it, that's the only thing that's open for debate. But in terms of opinion, don't we all have our opinions about everything? Isn't that the only thing that everybody has? A lot of them are stupid. A lot of my opinions are dumb. Yeah. But we all have them. I can't change it. I have an opinion about things. But yeah. It's but not again, a decision. That's, that's an only in stand-up thing, though, isn't it? Like, yeah. no one no one needs shout in the middle of a play. 
<laughs> Could you imagine yeah. doing like a Shakespeare play? Yeah, like, no, but uh, um, my man wrote this. He doesn't know what it's like for women to take poison. Yeah, <laughs> it's just crazy <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, what I like about that joke too is is again sort of talking about the the meaning or whatever is is what's what's fun about like that's sort of one of my examples of have the joke before any sort of message about it because the joke itself doesn't the metaphor of the abortion joke and the abortion doesn't even doesn't even hold up in the in the two minute rant like I'm just jumping like by the end of it you have no idea if I'm doing a pro life message a pro choice <laughs> message it's just a bunch a bunch of garbly things but people are laughing just cuz it's crisscrossing into the actual debate but I'm still like pretending like it's about a joke and but um I think that's that's kind of important too is that you're not you're not necessarily there to make a statement one way or the other sometimes it's just fun just to to make fun to, to make to like none of this makes any sense at all that's why I draw a lot of pleasure when I make fun of my uh, shortcomings and and the dumb things I do and I get into it yeah, even yeah. sometimes I make fun of things I thought that then I realized later was I can't believe I even thought that right I like making fun of that on stage because when people laugh at it um I feel like they understand that I'm coming from a place where, look, everything is can be funny and we can make fun of everything. L- look at what I'm doing. Yeah. Like this is something that I shouldn't have even brought up, but it's so ridiculous. If I was seeing another character do it and it wasn't me, I would laugh at it. Yeah. So you know what? This is me on stage, which is basically the same person off stage with the volume turned up really loud, right? It's like an exaggerated version of myself. Let's uh, let's address and let's make fun of it, you mm-hmm. know. And then after, I'm gonna talk about something that hopefully you did, and I'll make fun of you too, yeah. you know. And that's the kind of relationship i like to have well that's always a good like a pretty winning formula if you're if you're self-deprecating but not so that's the thing i don't do the um i've never because i don't feel it i've never done the uh oh man i'm too i'm too fat to do this i'm too i can't i hate that that's not funny to me what i'll talk about is is situations i got into and how i end up being the butt of the joke it's just the reality of it yeah yeah. and we'll laugh about it together but i i hate the stuff where it's let me get you on my side by making you feel sorry for me yeah i actually don't like that i hate it when i see that yeah when it's all i'm just such a shitty person nothing's working out what are you doing just you're supposed to lighten the mood up yeah you're making everybody sad yeah yeah it's uh yeah because it's that's what's tricky about when you're doing a joke about something like I do it about you know about homophobia or whatever but when you're talking about another group and then I've had that because I had a stutter joke for a while like very early on that was a pretty funny one but I remember I posted it on you it was one of the first things I ever put on YouTube with my stutter joke and and it got pushed back because people you know didn't like that it was about stuttering and that and that was interesting too because I, I because it was, it did well in the clubs, but the online it was getting a lot of hate, and um, and I asked another comic about it, like what's that, and and it's like, the he asked, well, is it, do you open with it normally? No, it's always in the middle of the set, and online is it just by itself? <laughs> yes, yeah. and that's what like, which was a really cool, <laughs> that, um, a very cool point, like you got to build the trust and get yeah. them on your side. But what was funny about that was one of the comments was like, what a dick. Why don't you joke about going bald? <laughs> and and like, it was like, <laughs> yeah. They're so mad right off the Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, okay. uh, but I think and the, the, they tried to make the point of like, you know, comedians should just joke about themselves. and, and That's not how it works. And uh, Well, or it is, but it's your, your it, choice. Well, technically you are always talking about yourself because you're, Talking about what you see, what you you're thinking. So yeah. in a way, I guess that's true. Yeah, I agree with that too. But that stutter is something that you would experience, so you'll talk about. It's but what you said is so. Uh, I learned the hard way as well, um, with the context of whether something's in the beginning or not. I I had gotten in trouble at the comedy nest. Um, a couple had uh, called me a racist and got up, but they didn't do it during during the set. Everybody was laughing at a good time, so I didn't even notice. There were just two people. Mm-hmm. It was a packed Saturday night, and I went uh, backstage and. Uh, the one of the waitresses came and told us, "Hey, that couple walked out and they asked for the money, but they didn't make a big scene. They just said he's a racist, so we're leaving. We want our money back." And I was like, "What the fuck? I'm not a racist." And then Rodney Ramsey was was with me, and I told him the joke. He's like, "That's a pretty racist joke." And he's like, "What did you? What was next to that joke?" And I said, "Oh, I said this one too." And it was another race yeah, joke, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I had never put them side by side. Yeah, yeah. And Rodney Ramsey was like, "Why'd you say them back to back?" He's just looking at me like, "How dumb? Why did you use? It? You've never done that before. Why would you use them back to back?" I go, "I don't know. I thought they fit together because all race related." And he's just shaking his head like, "You idiot! Like you set it up for them to get offended." 
you know because mm, it was just because then because it was back to back it wasn't peppered in she assumed i guess it was just those two that had the problem it was mostly her actually apparently her boyfriend left um she thought oh he's just going on a rant now about race mm. where it wasn't i just in the back of my mind i was like oh, i've never put these back to back they're both related yeah, they're yeah. in the same yeah, folder yeah. let me fucking say them together and that's what uh, set her off if i had just done one i think I would have been clear, but it took her the second one and she got up and said, fuck this guy. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> but it's just funny, Rodney's reaction. He's looking at him, he's like, why did you put them? Y- y- another comic telling you yeah. that a very obvious statement yeah, of yeah. why did you put them back to back? Yeah. And it like it was a moment of clarity. I'm like, fuck, he's or, so right. Or why did you put it by itself online? Yeah. Like, that's, <laughs> that's your whole, that's your whole shtick. He's just being a racist. Yeah, um, it's just so ridiculous. Yeah. No, I had somebody walk out, and again, I didn't know. I I didn't know they walked out, but then it was again the club afterwards saying, "Oh yeah, he was in the box office screaming and wanted his money back." <laughs> What'd you stuff. say? That was uh, it was a I guess a gay man got offended because I had a joke about uh, my son wanting to go out for Halloween. Like, what do you want to be for Halloween? I want to be a homo. <laughs> and it's like what? And it's sort of the jokes about my reaction, and I have a pretty like in the joke in the story. I have like kind of a oh my god what what does this mean was that and then it turns out that he actually meant a hobo he's like what like oh, what, what, is, what is a homo a poor person oh you mean a hobo and but it's sort of about that but the joke oh was, thank god you want to be homeless well like, that's <laughs> not that's it that's how I end it it's like oh my god <laughs> what did that say about me I'm more comfortable with my son being homeless than gay that's like amazing and and it's and I like it because it's it's sort of like what you're saying how the jokes are all ultimately about ourselves. Yeah. And I kind of have this moment of just oh my like I thought I was tolerant, but that that reaction was sort of weird. But uh, apparently, yeah, this this guy thought no, that was a total slam against. That was a statement. A statement and a slam against gay people, and and he marched that made quite a big scene about. It. I think he was with a big group of people who all stayed. So that was. Like, but that's it, the statement in itself too, yeah. right? The fact that everybody around him, la- I think, pissed him off even more because he took it the wrong way, and the mm-hmm. fact that they didn't see it his way got him even more. And she's like, "I can't believe you guys can't see it." It happens to a lot of people. Like, I can't believe my friends don't see how bad this is. Yeah, yeah. And then it, and then you have to deal with it after if he posts on the blog. Yeah, but yeah. he didn't. He just went to the box office. Yeah, yeah. In this case, and he yelled. Oh, by the way, because you said stutter, I'm gonna tell you the funniest stutter joke I ever heard. All right. I didn't make it up, though. It really happened. Uh, it happened in this neighborhood, actually, and I feel like it encompasses the sense of humor of the neighborhood. Uh, my buddy Peter was older. They were in a scouts meeting, and him and I think his friend uh, George, they were all these kids together, and they had ordered pizza. And the pizza delivery guy comes, and the guy George has a stutter. He went to pay, and then he came back, and he wanted extra money for a tip. And he goes, he's like, Peter, I need $2. two $2." And everybody looks at him, and he goes, dude, I don't have 6 bucks." Mm-hmm. And to me, that was like the, like, look at that. He just took the two, two, you know, and just that sense of thinking on the spot, not a comedian, just mm. a bunch of kids, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, sure. But just that, and I felt that that always encompassed the sense of humor of this neighborhood. That's how they think, right? It's always ripping you, yeah, yeah. taking exactly what you said. They, he, that's all he did. Sure. And throwing it back at you. And because you said stutter, maybe think of that. Yeah. And it's always been one of my, uh, I always go back to it in my head. I always think about that joke of just how people interact with each other yeah. and just take what they say and throw it back at them. Yeah, yeah. And I always loved that joke. Yeah. I always loved it. I always thought it was hilarious. Although, as a former member of the Scouts, I'm offended yeah. that you dragged them into, <laughs> into yeah, into this anti-stutter <laughs> uh, rant. That was that. See, that's that's sort of the weird uh, audience reaction you could expect to get from that. It's like, why did you bring the Scouts into it? Um, but uh, yeah, it was uh, what you just made me think of something else too. Uh, oh man, I lost it to make that dumb thing. About oh, the did scouts. you lose it? I want to hear this. No, I wonder what what. Uh, Seeing the neighborhood and ripping. Oh, yes. Okay. So, yeah. So, the your, the friend teased the stuttering friend, right? Yeah. Well, that's how everybody here grew up. Yeah. No. And it's because uh, Jeff Ross, you know, uh, who, who hosts the Comedy Central roasts and, or is the roast master of them or whatever. Yeah. Um, he sort of made a similar point. I heard him getting interviewed and he was saying how, you know, he goes, he does clubs and he, he roasts people and makes fun of people. That's uh, sort of an insult comic. And he asked for a volunteer from the audience and it was like a guy with maybe multi- muscular dystrophy or something like in a wheelchair and he volunteered and and jeff went at him and made jokes about him and everyone was laughing and the guy was laughing and and this is a, as jeff ross tells the story and and basically the conclusion the, the guy sort of thanked him at the end and sort of said you know i just want to be included in all the jokes i don't want the special treatment or the people being tiptoeing around me 
And yeah, because uh, that must feel strange too, right? When yeah. somebody's like, I go, oh, yeah, I can't yeah. say that joke right now. Yeah, yeah. No, and that's, uh, I mean, yeah, that's how I feel about when you're bringing up these touchy topics. It's like, well, what's, what's more... What's more prejudiced, me telling the joke or me thinking, ooh, these people can't take the joke. I better not. Have you had it happen? It's happened to me a couple of times where the people that talk to me about, I think that's offensive, are not the people I'm talking about. Yeah. And it's, I, it's very difficult for me to explain to them how moronic their argument is. I'm like, well, you're saying those people can't handle it, but they're laughing, had a good time and left, and you stuck around to tell me that they're not going to get the joke or they're going to get offended. But they're, they're already gone. They, they had a good time. What yeah. are you talking... This is so stupid. Why are we even arguing about this? And it, it's moronic that it happens repeatedly. It's like, I'm the defender of these defenseless people. And they're like, no, we're not defenseless. We're having a great time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, it's so strange. I, uh, okay. So that that's the story I have about that is uh, uh, I used to tell this joke. It's one I should like to bring back sometime. But it's about uh, honey, it's someone someone telling me that, that deaf... deaf jam comedy def jam nights that the the bar sells out of heineken because uh, black people drink a lot of heineken and me taking that information and thinking like like and bit on stage is me being like i didn't i never heard of that before i never heard of that stereotype yeah yeah i never heard of that and it's about <laughs> me struggling to process oh man this is a new stereotype and this is a new <laughs> this is a new thing i have to watch out like i can't offer someone heineken and anyway this, so that's sort of what that's the joke funny, yeah, that's and funny. that's what the premise is and i did that on stage and there was a table of black people off to the left and a table of white people right next to them and the black table were laughing very much at this bit and the white table were uncomfortable <laughs> and I I even swear I, I saw this out of the corner of my eye I finished the joke hit the punchline boom everyone you know people are laughing the black table's laughing and I swear I saw a woman at the white table lean over and apologize <laughs> Oh, on insane. behalf of the white race for what I just said. On behalf of your Heineken joke. Yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh, uh, just... Sorry about him. Yeah, We're yeah. We're going to have like, a meeting about him. Uh, we're going to have a race meeting about him next week. Yo. We're trading him to somebody else. And, of course, the other, it's, the other table's just, like, shrugging, like, oh, yeah. But, uh, and so, anyway, that that's sort of sums up... That's a total example of what you're saying right It's there. so absurd, though. It's absurd when visually they could see it represented that whoever they think is going to be offended is not and is having a good time. But... Th- they don't want to... That's the thing is there's no compromise. They don't want to budge. They don't want to... Oh, maybe I'm wrong. They don't want to admit that. They're like, no, no, I'm still right. They still don't understand. Yeah. Let me tell them, hey, I'm sorry we did that to you. And the guy's like, what? Have a good time? What are you talking about? We're, shut the fuck up. Sit down. Drink something. And uh, and that's sort of a joke that I think is is a plus. plus like Because I, I like jokes about that where you're talking... You know, it's, it's sort of... Like when you're you're the straight white male on stage, there's still so much material for you to have about this crazy change in world, right? Yeah, like the shift of of power and and tolerance and stuff like that. And yeah, I like that Heineken joke because it's about a white guy struggle not wanting to be racist, but finding it hard because there's new stereotypes thrown at them like, all the time. How do you handle this? Like, I how could accidentally offer a, a black guy a Heineken yeah. and he's going to think, oh, is he going to Yeah, yeah. But I never heard that stereotype. This is hilarious. This is such a good joke. Yeah. Such a funny, yeah. And it's, uh, you know, but that, you know, why would you want to censor that? Why would you not want to put that out there into a room, a diverse room of people and have everyone unpack it and like, yeah, because you get, you know, you get the minority that's, that's, Bignon saying, yeah, it's true, you white guys are really, really suck at, at uh, saying the wrong thing. And then you have the white people who are like, it's true, I really suck at saying the wrong thing. <laughs> and that's, you know, that it feels to me like that's where, you know, understanding and, hum- you know, everybody's human and people, I don't know. I don't know if that's race is, is the big thing now. I, I don't, uh, anymore at least, I don't. I don't really have people tell me you can't talk about this because you're of a different race. I only get the, uh, because I'm straight, and I can't uh, talk about so that I get a lot, and uh, white. But I keep telling them I'm Greek. Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and like you're white. It's who are you considering white? The people you're talking about? I don't fall in that category either. Like, yeah, no, it's fun. I still find. I mean, I've, I find both. Like it's still it's still a threading a needle for both those topics. And I think everyone says you know Trump uh, really uh, is great for comedy, which you know in a lot of ways he is. But in that regard, talking about that stuff trump has had a huge chilling effect like now it's even more dangerous to bring yeah. up anything 
because a year ago I felt like I could joke about stuff and the audience would give you the benefit of the doubt. And then, you know, the United States elected this white supremacist enabling I feel monster. like he's a white enthusiast. Yeah, enable. Well, I said <laughs> enabling. He's an enable. Yeah, white. I don't know. <laughs> I love these He's terms. a supreme enthusiast. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so I, because I did have, I had a joke about, I had a joke about me fist, or a, bl- a black guy fist bumping me. I told, you know, told a year ago, two years ago, and it did really well because, again, it was another joke about me, a white guy, like, suddenly thinking I was really cool. Like, what a what an honor that that guy <laughs> chose me to give the fist bump. And it was, and audiences laughed at that. Like, they just, uh, you know, but, and then I, in the last year, that stock plummeted on that one. People stopped laughing at it because they just thought, no, we don't want to. Because they think a couple levels ahead. And uh, yeah. like he's addressing this topic that might mean that he's thinking yeah, something else. Yeah, or we don't, you know, it, there's sort of a thing like you know you don't get to joke about this anymore because the world's more racist than it's ever been, and we don't want to hear it. But isn't that making it more? Ra- I've I've always said I've often said this. Um, I thought growing up, what they would tell us and what always made sense and still makes sense to me now is that in order to combat racism, it's all about education and sharing, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you're scared, you're like, oh, no, don't eat that food. You know, that's Greek food. You can't. But then you eat the food, you're like, yeah, it's some good food. You mm-hmm. know, or you hang out with anything. It could yeah, be Italian. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you're racist about is education, experiencing it. And you kind of, whether you like it or not, you lose the racism, right? Because you learn, you're like, okay, we're all, this is stupid. Why would I even yeah, have yeah. this uh, preconceived notion? I never even spoke to this person. But now, if we're closing the door, we're like, no, no, your opinion doesn't matter. I don't want to hear about it because, you know, you're talking about. I feel like that's causing a bit more of these walls to go back up. Yeah, where they're yeah. like, oh no, I can't, I can't mix with these people. They, they might get mad at me. They're, that's so absurd. We're supposed to all make fun of the differences. Yeah, yeah. No walls are definitely going up. They're going up. It, it, Trump's getting what he wanted. He wanted the walls to go up. They're going. Yeah, yeah. I'm like Trump uh, when it comes to homes. I noticed all these open concepts stuff. I don't like them. I like walls in the house. I like segregation. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why you want to be able to see every. It's just you know, I want the bedroom to be the bedroom. The living room is the living room. Mm-hmm. That's why I can agree with him on the walls. <laughs> Like I, I don't think whole. I've ever heard him say "open concept" in my life, though. So <laughs> he doesn't. He doesn't. Need the, yeah, he, doesn't he, he doesn't strike me as an interior design <laughs> type enthusiast or supremacist. But it's it's not. Yeah, the white enthusiast thing makes you laugh because like he's a white. I, I think he's an enthusiast. I don't think he really knows anything to be supreme about. Right? Yeah, There's yeah. no. I made a tweet about this last week, and and people didn't like it because <laughs> they didn't get it. Uh, I talked about how um, you can't have a superior race, right? And I listed the reasons, and it was basically just a list of people from different races that are shitty. Yeah, yeah. This is why there's, I've never seen a reason for there to be superior race. And then I made fun of the Swiss at the end. Mm-hmm. And people only focused on me making fun of the Swiss, saying, oh, he made that tweet just to attack the Swiss. But it's all about the fact that you could make fun of any... Everybody's shit. Everybody has shit yeah, yeah. In, their, in their race, if you want yeah. to call it, right? Um, there is no superior... I've met a lot of inferior races. I'll tell you that. I can see a lot of inferior races in all of us. But I've never met somebody who could make me change my mind and be like, ah, there's a superior one. Yeah, well, I always loved, you know, the, the, the Ku Klux Klan argue their genetic superiority by dressing up in sheets and wearing pointy hats and <laughs> and, and worshipping a wizard and all. Yeah, like, the, oh. the, the grand dragon and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, you are you are <laughs> evolved. Or, I'm sorry, not evolved. I didn't say that. Yeah. <laughs> That's so um, stupid. I don't know. Yeah, it's, uh, but it is touchy now. It's, it's strange. It's, um, like I said, they're taking the words... They're, they're taking them out of context. They don't care about the content or the context. Just certain trigger words. Like, oh, we could use this. Mm-hmm. And there's been a lot of articles that come out, too, and they demonize people. Um, and then you just read the headline before looking into it. You're like, oh, this guy's an asshole. Yeah, yeah. And then when you look into it, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure if I disagree with this guy. He didn't really do anything wrong. Or this woman, you know? Well, I think, man, and it's just, yeah, there's few things as bad as, or few things scream slow news day as much as an article about something outrageous a stand-up comedian said, which, you know, that's been happening a lot over the last couple of years, like yeah. that, you know, Amy Schumer upset someone with this, or... Oh, did she? Or No, no, I'm just I'm just using, like, examples of... Uh, or, you know, or, yeah, or Jimmy Kimmel or, or whatever. Um, and it's just such a... It's so frustrating, because it's like you say, if it's uh, either it's in, you know, in print, and it's just the head... They've, They've got to economize their words, so they just make the most dramatic headline, like Jimmy Kimmel upsets Asians over joke. Boom. Yeah. Now now you've got that in, in your, your head. head, and now whatever you're reading. And then, you know, most half the time they don't even quote the joke, or but if they do, it's got no 
Like, it's not funny because you're reading it in print, and yeah. it's, it's in the middle of a paragraph, and you've already read the headline, so you've got your preformed attitude. Um, They'll say things like, the headline will be like, David Pride hates talking to black people. And then you read it, and it's like, David Pride made a joke about how he hates talking to black people about Heineken because this and this. But they'll just take, you know, and they'll yeah, just yeah. make a statement, and most people won't read the article. Yeah. So we're like, this fucking David Pride guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, don't like the, I don't like the cut of his jib. Yeah, right. yeah. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, or, and, and it's even worse if it's a broadcast, like if it's a radio hit, like a 30 second news story where the guy, like, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. And then he said this, this, and the representative of this council is very upset. Yeah. And it's like there's no context. That's another thing people don't get about stand up. And that's why I like, I hate, you know, when stuff goes up on YouTube and like, to demonize someone, yeah. um, is that, uh, you know, it's stand up comedy is a is very much a you had to be there sort of experience. Uh, if you think of a show, you know, people pay money, they go in, they get a few drinks, loosen up, an MC goes up, makes them all feel comfortable, welcome, they get the opening act, the headline act, the the set, you know, pe- the comedian opens up with a joke to win some trust and get a relationship. And then, you know, and then if they if that's the type of comic they are, maybe then they'll start pushing the envelope a bit, but they've already established stuff. We're all on the boat. Yeah, and the room's all on the boat. And then, but then you get someone who, like, takes the 30-second chunk out of nowhere, puts it up online, say, look what this person said. And someone who's, like, watching it at 2 in the morning because they've got insomnia. Outraged. It's like, oh, how can they say this? And, uh, and so, and that, you know, that all gets lost. And that gets lost in these, you know, when there's a little journalism piece or, uh, um, and it just gets lost in general about any time, I don't know, when people are outraged about jokes. Yeah, they get out. I don't know why. There's so much real, uh, there's so much real uh, fodder, I guess. Like, there's real things you could be mad at. Yeah. And yet you choose to get mad at the comedian. For, but it's also because I guess we're so much uh, more easily accessible, right? You, they'll see you in front of, you'll be three feet away, right, on stage, um, on Twitter, Right, they could access you. They could send you a message. So I guess they're like, okay, if I send a message to my prime minister, my president yeah, yeah, about yeah. something they did, they won't reply. But this asshole talking about pasta, oh, I'm gonna get him. You yeah, know? no, you're vulnerable. You're like, yeah, it's exactly like you say. Why go up against institutionalized like injustice or whatever when you've got this like self-employed starving artist yeah. who you just like tell them that they're the problem. They also, uh, a lot of certain people don't see the difference between the stage you, right? The comic you, that the, the public, and the, the real person, sure. right? So they'll come and they'll talk to you about things that you said on stage that were clearly in jokes, and they'll either agree with or disagree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I don't, that's not how, that's just, that's like a fix, that's an exaggerated version of myself, yeah, yeah. right? Sometimes people will be like, oh, I see your videos, and, and, and I've seen you on stage. Uh, you, you're calm now because I'm talking off stage normal. Yeah, and I'm like, yeah, yeah I'm not. I, well, you think I go through my whole day yelling about everything? <laughs> you know, I get mad. Yeah, when I'm on stage or if I'm putting out a video or something, that's the context of that. It's let's bitch about something, yeah. right? But they, sometimes they have trouble making the separation. It's those are the same people that take things out of con- and be like, this is what he believes because they take the character, they take the stage persona out of context, and they go, this is who this person is. Yeah, yeah. You know, this is the. Well, around the same time, I did that. Like, uh, you know bringing up cancer on stage joke, like right around the same time I had the new opening bit, which, and again, I don't know if you've seen that, where I start talking about, uh, first I open saying I look like Pierce Brosnan. I've, se- I've seen you say the Pierce Brosnan thing. Yeah, so uh. that whole thing is like, and I, that's, again, that's me sort of having a little agenda about comedy, but, you know, but, uh, you know, mostly you want, make, want the audience to laugh at it. But it's uh, me, you know, I say I look like Pierce Brosnan, and then they laugh, and I say, yeah, yeah, you know, that's, yeah, you guys know I don't really mean that. We come on the stage, we say things we don't really mean. Anyway, why am I going on about that? What else can I tell you? I'm an unrepentant racist. (laughs) And then go into that, and then and they're all like, oh, and it's like, no, 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 you you We've already, yeah, we forgot part one. We we forgot about part one. (laughs) And it, you know, it usually, it does, it does well, and it loosens the crowd up. Um, in my ideal perfect world, they remember that and remember that for the rest of the set. Um, d- I don't think that really happens, though, because then... You, you get know, these it's, pockets. It's, it's happened often enough that later in the set, they like take offense to something, and it's like, yeah, no. What was something you had said a little while ago about, it was a topic, you're like, uh, I want to talk about this, 
and then um, you're like, and that's it. I said it. It was done. And then you moved on. There was, there was something you had done a little while ago that was hilarious because somebody reacted to it before you even got to the punchline. Oh, uh, was that the trigger warning thing? Or that, was, that was the trigger warning thing. Like I want to, uh, cause I say offensive stuff. I forgot what it was exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, then you said it right. But before you got to the funny part, someone, which was, someone stepped on, someone it. stepped on it cause they overreacted <laughs> obviously. Cause yeah. if they had waited, they would have realized like, okay, he's not fucking yeah. with anybody. Yeah. 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 That was, that was awkward, but that was, that was interesting to see somebody right. That's what I'm saying. Sometimes they're just ready. Like, oh, he's going to, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to give him a chance. When had they waited, they wouldn't have looked like such a clown. Yeah, yeah. But they did. Yeah, they did. That, that's happened a couple of times. Like, again, that's a, another weird thing about when a, you can sense that a joke stock is starting to plummet, that people are less patient about it. and they. But I don't think that, I think it says more about um, the evolution of just people in general, the way they think, and the audience member, um, not so much about... Uh, not not so much about the joke losing stock because yeah they're losing the, I mean the joke is seems to be losing stock but it's more of them they're losing patience it's not the the joke is still the joke right yeah uh, and people used to sit there with more of an idea of let me sit and listen whereas now they don't have that reaction now like I said they're ready I see a lot of people go in there antsy they're like oh I'm I'm the victim today let's make me the the star yeah yeah whereas before they used to want to be stars by just heckling yeah. No, but it's but it all it all amounts to the same like whether or not, yeah. Because I don't think I think the joke is still the same joke. But if the audience, if the audience are losing patience with it, you're the comedian's still stuck with the same problem of like eventually you gotta. If the joke's consistently now getting this weird chill, uh, you know it sucks. But a lot of yeah, a lot of jokes go the way of the dodo just because. You know, and maybe it doesn't. I mean, maybe it doesn't suck. Maybe it's just that's the evolution of society. Like I'm pretty comfortable, you know, like with the idea that comedy doesn't always age well. Yeah. In fact, very often it totally does not totally, age yeah. well. No. Nope. And but that you can still, you know, just you tell you tell the joke. It's it's that sort of thing of well, he's a product of his time or whatever, which pisses people off sometimes. But I think for comedy that kind of works. It's sort of like what I was saying before about how you don't you know don't take a year off and then come back with all the same jokes. A lot of them will work. I mean, I've got stuff I've been doing for years and years and years, and it still works fine. But if it's any, if it's got some sort of social element to it or a political element to it... People's uh, views change. Yeah. People's reactions, mostly. Yeah. And so, um, and you know, that's... Uh, but again, that's where, you know, try to be optimistic and think, yeah, we're, we're comics. We'll just adapt to... The changing audience. But I feel like we, we adapt maybe in the way we're going to craft the joke, not so much about the way we think about things because we're all pretty much products of our time, right? So mm. we, we have a set way of not how we think in the sense that we can't get new ideas, but this is how we're going to approach them, mm -hmm. right? So I'm already stuck in my ways of how when a topic comes up, I'm going to think about it and try to dissect it. Mm -hmm. That's never going to change. So I'm always going to look at a specific angle, right? Yeah. My, my angle and laugh about that or, or get mad about something. Uh, that's never going to change because I'm just a product of my time, right? That's, you know, depending on when you grew up and how you saw the world, yeah. you're going to continue seeing it that way. So you're either going to be happy about something, less happy about something, upset. That's true. But the, the fact that it's coming into our jokes that we're changing either the way we're crafting it or the way we're delivering a certain line or a tag or based on the reactions evolving... That's what I find is interesting, and that's what's changing the game about. Because sure. instead of staying the same, we're changing stuff based on their change, not yeah. so much because we feel we need to. Oh yeah, but that's that's yeah, but that's kind of what that's what it likes. Even in the course of a set, you throw out jokes in your head. Like, you watch where the yeah. crowd's going, and like, you I'm try. going this way. Yeah, you think, okay, I'm I'm gonna veer left now because they're not going for the right thing. But it's uh, uh, yeah, like what I was saying earlier about my joke about my son wanting to be a a homo for Halloween. Um, <laughs> you know, think of, to put that like 10 years ago or 15 years ago, maybe that would be the whole punchline and maybe the audience would find it hilarious. Like, ha, ha, ha. And me being, oh, I'm so, I'm so mad that he's, <laughs> and, <laughs> oh, I, oh, gay people. Am I right, people? And they're all like, yeah, oh, sucks to be you, oh. But, uh, but the same experience now, years later, and now the joke... The joke is much more about me, like, jumping to the wrong conclusion and then kind of processing, like, well, how do I react to that? So, yeah, I mean, that's, 
that's probably a positive thing. That's that means all our thinking is kind of evolving. I'm I'm not gonna go on stage tell that joke and then have the punchline be ah oh, gays. I can't. <laughs> I hate. I hate this. And I like know. the hope. I just like oh, I'm more comfortable with him. Being that. <laughs> What does that say about me? Yeah, yeah. That? It's uh, that's such a funny joke. Yeah. And and maybe you know maybe 15 years ago you would leave out the what does that say about me because no one would have a problem with it yeah they'd but, all be but on now, board but now you gotta be like and and it's true like now you, I, we're you all to... more more a little more empathetic I mean I shouldn't say we're all more but I think we try to be yeah um, we do and and yeah and comedians are pretty progressive right for the most part like that's another reason why it's a bit silly to attack comedians because it's a case of kind of uh, Yeah, fight eating your own, uh, like what you were saying before about why wouldn't you attack actual institutions and stuff or what that that could actually do something about the problem. But instead, yeah. you go for the easy target, who probably would agree with you on exactly ninety percent of your stuff. Yeah, that that's the other thing that I don't. We can't. Uh, if I make fun of, um, if I make fun of the prime minister, mm. no matter how much you yell at me, I can't change any policies. Yeah. Right, I won't be able to affect him. Zero ways. However, if you attack him or I don't know the constituents that are causing the problems that you're upset about, uh, maybe you could affect some kind of social change. But I'm just relaying the message. I'm just making fun of what happened. I have no actual authority as to what happens. I can't change it. Same thing with Trump. But we're making fun of Trump. I mean, I can't change the election. I can't put Bernie Sanders back in. I can't do any yeah, of that yeah. stuff. I'll just make fun of what happened. Yeah. This is reality that we, let's let's talk about. Or Abdul making fun of Hillary afterwards. It was such a good joke too. Yeah, it was such a good joke. I loved it, and, and he had came on the podcast too, and we talked about it that situation because I was laughing very loud at that joke in the back because mm. it, it was it was perfect timing. It, everything was going well for me. It's not like he didn't deliver properly. So she got so mad because he's like, oh, he's making fun of women. This is about women. This guy hates it. That was her view. If you're making a joke about Hillary and about women voters, you're making fun of all... You just don't like women. It's not about making fun of what actually happened. Mm -hmm. And then she was so on board with sweatshops, right? She had a great time laughing about that. It shocked me to be like, okay, that's... And that's something you are contributing, right? You're not choosing how you buy things based on whether it was made in a sweatshop or not. You're just consuming all you want, right? And mm -hmm. you're so you're fine with these kids in sweatshops. <laughs> something that you actually could uh, affect, you could change at least socially the way you purchase things to not um, uh, not enforce it, right? And not prom and not help them, not sure. give those companies money. But instead, no, no, you don't, you don't care about that shit. You're focused on getting mad about something that you can't even change. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, and yeah, I guess, and I mean, it, you try. Try to see things their way, and like, yeah, we all get mad about something, but it's then, but then you don't. I get mad about everything. Yeah, and but you don't. Uh, if someone makes a joke about something that you don't find funny, no, that I it could, like, even if I don't like the joke, I, I'm. Yeah, you just don't laugh at it. I just don't laugh at it. It's very unless it's rare that it happens, though. Like I said, unless I feel like somebody's just trying to be hurtful. But I mean, from the comedians I know, it's very. I haven't seen it really. Where yeah. somebody's gonna say a joke just to be hurtful, you know what I mean? Yeah, and even if they are, like, if you're gonna approach them at all, it's it's sort of like you were saying, like, hey, I could see how that tag might not, like, no one's getting in your face saying you're you're racist. They're yeah. saying, hey, this is this is where I think this is, might be a problem for you, uh, and and that's I mean, I, I think we all give each other the benefit of the doubt. None of us. Yeah, because we know each other well in the sense of what we do as craftsmen, right? We, a lot of us might not uh, be on a lot of shows together to know yeah. them personally, but we know what a comic is. We know how comedians think. So I always give everybody the benefit of the doubt. I see something, and it's uh, like I, I've seen a lot of people recently have been going up against uh, straight white males. They like to make fun of them, right? How stupid they are because they're... It's the patriarchy, right? Yeah. But I take it all with a grain of salt. Yeah. And, like I see where they're coming from. They're trying to make... They don't hate everybody that's straight, Or that's white, or that's absurd, right? That's absurd. But uh, some people might take it like that one day, you know? Well, it's, uh, um, you probably heard about the woman that yelled at me, called, oh. yelled at me that I was a straight white male. Yeah. And I heard about this. Yeah. And just, you, that was the heckle. You're a straight white male. Because I, I did my, my joke about gender pronouns. Uh, which is a good joke. Which is a good joke, a silly joke, a totally, and another confessional joke because it's about how I'm having trouble. Keeping up with changing times and this whole, you know, of which pronoun to use, and then it, it, the punchline's a silly joke. 
And this woman got ma mad and called out exactly what was upsetting her, which was, you're a straight white male. So you being you is what upset her. Which the joke is, that's kind of the point of the joke, that um, I'm up there trying to figure something out. And but again, is it better if I just shut up about it and don't bring it out to light and make... No, but um, what I'm saying is, isn't it interesting that she... If you were a gay black woman and she had yelled that out... Yeah, yeah. Right? Which one of those would we want to dissect and say, well, that's, either uh, she's racist or heterophobic or homophobic, depending on what... Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Well, I've tried that. I've, I've played with that a couple times now. I've told the story on stage, and I've, you know... What part that, bother is what I'm saying? Was it the fact that you're straight? Was it you're white? Or you're a male? And if it was the complete opposite, would she still get mad? Well, that's what I sort of end saying, like, so now I'm identifying as a gay black woman. Because, yeah. uh, you know, it's my right. I can identify as who I want. And, and if that bothers her, right, <coughs> is it just anything that's not her, whatever she, whatever she is, I don't know who the person was, uh, straight or gay, female, I don't know, Irish or whatever it is, is anything that's not her will bother her. Because then if that's the case, then that's a whole personal thing. That's a racist thing, first of all. Um, but it's so strange if you if you try to dissect that comment because that's all that bothered is who you were, right? Yeah. Well, well, and that I I dared to, I dared to talk, not stay in my lane because of who you, exactly because of who you are. Isn't that what we're supposed to fight against? These uh, man, com it's great when comedians don't stay in their lane. It's awesome. Yeah, it's just the um, but uh, well, and that was a funny show too because then I I continued the set and that you know that part of the room was shut down. But it's just like, fine, bye bye, and there were the other two thirds of the room were laughing at stuff for the rest of the set, and you just, you just kind of shrug and say, yeah, you, you just know deal what? with it. I'm just, I'm just gonna take care of these people that are into it. And what you're saying too about how the angry people are louder, like, I gotta say, this woman it was before I got on stage. She was just shrieking at everything, like whether it's supportive or whatever. <laughs> but she was like, she was, she was into it. Well, yeah, but but very obnoxious, like. Like just, just, you know, if if you did again, if you if you knocked a straight white male, she'd be like, ah, and, she, and it's like, you know, come on, there are other people here. Like just, uh, you see that she was passionate. However, still wrong. Being passionate doesn't make you right. I'm passionate, so. but I'm wrong most of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, but that's, uh, yeah, it's crazy how it's how it's changing, how the game's changing, and but again, yeah, but that's, uh, yeah, I'm just. I'm clinging to hope that we can all just adapt and and uh, you know just roll with it and. Well, now we have more. Um, we used to be at the mercy of a lot of you know uh, different social opinions that could affect us negatively or positively. Uh, I feel like now that we have the ability to you know promote our own stuff, uh, post our own videos, start a podcast, uh, sell your own specials online, you know we're more independent. Mm -hmm. That you could kind of weed out uh, the people that. You know, won't necessarily be fans, won't like it, but the people that do appreciate your comedy can actually uh, benefit from it. Can buy your specials, uh, can listen to your show, mm -hmm, can mm -hmm. follow you on Twitter, all that. Uh, we're in the day and age where you could create your own platform. You could create, you yeah. could make a living as an independent worker. Yeah, no, it's funny. I've I've just uh, I just produced my third CD and it's not ready for release yet. But it's what's funny is it is kind of a capsule of all these sort of edgy dangerous bits that we've been talking about and i'm kind of curious about how what that's going to mean because a lot of these are like uh like it's it, it has like the joke about was on going out as a homo and and stuff like that and it'd be sort of fascinating on the one hand it may be i almost wonder if it's too late now to release this thing if it's no. if it's time has passed on the yeah on the other hand i like as a even if it only ever serves as a time capsule of this weird place and time when people got upset at things when is it uh, due to drop i i hope uh you know i was i was looking at christmas i don't think that's gonna happen but uh early 2018 early 2018 we'll say yeah and uh that'll be my third one and i still got two others out there and is it uh, the stuff that you produce now is it all uh, independent or do you deal with uh some kind There's of production company no either? no label or anything no just, label uh, right just i paid someone to record it and the that's it. But you see what I'm saying? We have these options now, and because of the internet, you can get it all out there. Because yep. the biggest issue in the past that uh, all artists had, even musicians, uh, was that barrier, that marketing barrier of getting it to the people, right? How, yep. how are they going to know about you? 
right? You yeah, need to yeah. be on the radio. That's all people know. Yeah. Now, because of the internet, because of Facebook, uh, Twitter, everything, just these social sharing and, oh, I saw something that you might like, let me give it to you. Mm -hmm. it, it gives us, like I said, even though there's a lot more criticism around us, it still gives us the opportunity to be like, all right, well, for all the people that do like it, yeah, yeah, you can still um, purchase, you could still help out, you can still watch a show, you can still do this. And I like that. I like that the game is changing that way. Even though there's a lot of censorship, still a lot of like YouTube is uh, definitely bothering certain contributors, things like that. They're censoring um, people or they're demonetizing videos that talk about, not angrily, but just talk about taboo subjects. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's a mass shooting, you can't talk about it. Not say whether you're for or against or anything like that. Just don't mention it. Yeah. Or So people are losing revenue streams just based on addressing a topic. Yeah. So that's not good. However, you do have a lot more access to your fans than you would have ever had in the 90s, let's say. Yeah, yeah. So that's what I find interesting, that you could still carve out your niche. Yeah, yeah. No. Yeah, so it's, there's, there's hope for it what's, all. Uh, what's next for you? Um, I'm going to do some shows around town probably up until uh, Christmas and then uh, hopefully uh, start fresh uh, debaters and... Uh, in early 2018, I'll just I'll do like the Ontario little circuit a bit for uh, Ottawa, Toronto, Kingston, that sort of thing, at uh, the Absolute Comedy Clubs. Very good clubs. <coughs> They're great clubs, yeah. Uh, uh, they know how to run uh, a comedy club. Yeah. And what about your website? You want to plug your website, your Twitter? <laughs> you know what's funny about yeah? Well, okay, Twitter is at David Pride Jokes, and uh, website's davidpride.com. But I'm, I've just I was told. And you know, not to discourage anyone, but uh, that my my website there's like bots on it. Someone someone told like a security company told me I got malware on there. That's actually uh, hawking uh, New York Giants jerseys and knockoff Prada handbags. <laughs> so uh, please go to davidpride.com. But if you see anything that looks like it's I, selling you a handbag, it's not you. It's that's not me. That's hilarious. I know, because you think of David Pride, you think like a fashion guru, right? <laughs> Gucci. But, uh, yeah, yeah. How so, that, I've never even heard of this kind of shit happening. I don't know. I, but the guy, I was on the phone with the guy, and he said, like, okay, Google, search, Google your name, go to page three. And I looked at page three, and it was like, davidpride.com, Versace, <laughs> and stuff like that. <laughs> like all this stuff. That's um, amazing. That's it's weird. Cause, yeah, and you can't, I went on my site, and I, I, there's no hint of... But I guess oh. I guess it's possible if you're searching to be, I guess there are bots that are trying to misdirect you to I some. Have, there's a lot I don't understand about the internet and computers. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, me neither. But uh, yeah, but but DavidPride.com you can get the CDs off of there. Or if you don't want to risk getting trying to get sold a handbag, there's uh, yeah you can download them on uh, iTunes and Amazon and uh, CD Baby is where that you they sell. Uh, CD Baby. CDBaby.com sells some actual physical copies or downloads. So DavidPry.com, and if you're on Twitter and you go to David Pride Jokes, his website is connected over there. Uh, and you can get, uh, there's two albums already out. Yeah, Googly uh, and uh, Googly, which is my first one from years ago. So it's a quite, a, quite an it's innocent. It's a classic. Quite an innocent classic little affair. And then uh, Sight Gags was a, was a couple of years ago. That's got the braille joke on it that upset the woman who lost, whose dad lost her fingers. So you can see the growing edginess of David. <laughs> a little bit. And the third yeah. one, when it comes out, you're going to be like, this is a different person. He's yeah, just this, <laughs> this, guy's, this guy's a monster. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happened after you had kids. It just, you just got angry at everybody. Yeah, they yeah, just yeah. Ran like that. Well, no, very, David, thank you for coming on. Yeah, thank you this, for having me. Thank you for, for keeping at me, too. Because uh, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm really... Uh, you're too busy. But this <laughs> is good. So davidpride.com, davidpridejokes on Twitter... Uh, thank you guys for listening.